We're back here for the GDC and today we're in Ipswich and I'm back today to finish off some little jobs here that I started a few months back. But I can't get in. I can't get in. Oh, I broke it. <laughs> so while we're waiting, I'm going to get up on the scaffold here with my man Joel. Yo! We've got to get these tiles down because the boys are here taking the scaffold down and there's loads of tiles on there. So while we're waiting, we might as well make the most of the time. I... Monday morning blues, I open my eyes and I... Right, so the jobs we've got to do in here today are as follows. I need to block up this window here, not needed anymore. We're just putting one skin in. Got all these ties in the wall here ready for the block work, but this is staying so it's going to recess some shelves in here. So we're just going to have a single skin. We've got a load of needle holes that need to be filled up. So we've got them to do. And if you look above my head, we've got that to block up as well. And also, there's a couple of bits to do downstairs. So we're going to be busy today for sure. So first of all, I just stack bonded a few bricks in all of these holes where the needles were going through. They weren't hard at all. Just filled them up. They're going to be dot and dabbed over the top. Then I run a course of bricks along here to bring me back to gauge. Then started laying a few blocks along the wall here to get this little bit done. And there the window was all blocked up. I also then jumped up on the ladders and got the two bits done around the beams. So now they're all in there nice and secure. So there we have it. That's all the stuff in this little room. All sorted out, all hardened up. Now for a couple of little jobs downstairs. Nothing too serious, just a few bricks to fill up a couple of holes. So that's that little job complete for today. Now, Let's get on to the next one. I've had a phone call from one of my contacts and uh, apparently did some damage to a garage or something. So I'm gonna go and check it out now and see what it's about. Well, it looks like I found it. We've got a damaged pier here on the front of this garage. I think there's some more stuff to look at around the back. So I've managed to gain access now to this, uh, to this garage and Christ, this has had a hit. I mean, when it's had a hit, it has had a big hit. Look at this. So apparently what's happened is someone's came out of the doctor's opposite, reverse back, that it's got stuck, it's an automatic, it's gone, got stuck in reverse or something along these lines and it's a Range Rover and it's hit this pier here at about 35 mile an hour. And what it's done is it's pushed the wall right the way back and it doesn't look, doesn't look much at the front there, but trust me, when it's got all of this behind it, that must have hit at a hell of a pace. It's even taken the back of the garage out as well. Look at the bend on that. So I'm inclined to have a look at the back now, but obviously straight away, this whole back panel's got to come down. This whole central panel will have to come down. I'm inclined to replace that with block work, not brickwork, because that's going to be quicker and it's not going to be seen, but I would imagine the back half would have to be brickwork again. So let's have a look around the back and see how far it's gone. The other way as well yeah we can see now this has gone that's level there so you can see how much this is lent over now pushed out wow completely gone so it's two garage worth of back panel now got to be basically taken down and then we'll see the panel as well so this is quite a nice little job so now i've given that job a good look there hopefully i'll get that one because i think i can sort that one out relatively easily it's quite a lot of work to be done there obviously taking down the back taking down the center so we'll have to get some skips over there but there's nothing i can't do over there by myself so uh hopefully fingers crossed i'll get that one i've just got to go and organize now what i'm going to charge for it i think doing it by myself is probably a good week there probably a good day taking everything down and then I've got to source materials get the stuff over there um, but yeah nice little job to do have to get a couple of acros up to hold the roof up while I do it but yeah I'll, hopefully I'll get that one so I'm back again back here now and I weren't expecting to come here I thought it's going to be on another job but they need me here to put in a lintel so I'm going to be cutting out a doorway I hardened this up on Friday but it turns out the doorway goes from here to here so that little job I did there which only took me about 10 minutes but we're going to cut straight through that anyway so this is where the doorway is going I'm going to cut this through now and then install a big lintel above it oh yeah 
Because this is a double skin of brickwork, we drilled a hole through the wall so we can align through the other side and make sure the doorway is going to be in the right place. After that, it was time to fire up the saw, put on my PPE and cut the doorway out. I find the best thing to use is an SDS drill with a chisel bit. The stuff falls straight into the gorilla tubs and I can throw it straight into the skip. Barge. So there we have it, we're nice and level across there now, we've got our bearing re-established there and that one's set up there, so it's now it's time for the concrete lintel to go in, which is here, which I've cut to size, and I've put some muck on top of it first of all, so it saves me pushing some much in when we when we get up on there, but that'll fill up all, the, all the, the void and stuff in between, we'll squish that in, and I made that nice and solid. Myself and Ben then lifted the concrete lintel up into the hole. Then I grabbed an acro to make sure the lintel was pushed up nice and tight. After that, I needed to cut myself a couple of metal shims. So there we go. There's that side all in nice and solid. I've put one of them shims that I cut in both sides and piled some muck around there. So that's in there solid. Obviously the acro's holding it up, pushing everything upwards there to keep that secure. Now we've got the shims in, once this is all gone off, I can release that and it won't move at all. So now to quickly nip around the other side, move some plasterboard, and then we can get on cutting the other side of this doorway out. This was the driest place on site before the new roof went on. We can now see the holes that we drilled through from the other side. So that's where we'll mark up vertically from these holes and we know that they'll line up nicely to what we've done the other side. Out came my level so I could mark the wall, aligning it with the two holes that we drilled. Then out came the saw and I cut this side out. This might be a time if you're enjoying the video to hit that subscribe. So now it's the next morning and I've just taken the outcrow down and we're all lovely jubbly through there. Doorway complete. Now let's go back upstairs. And now we have another doorway to do. Ben's already made a start on it, so I'm going to finish this off. Got a bit of rubble here to clear up. We're going to get this one through, exactly the same as downstairs, no different, just break it through. But this one, the lintels are already installed, so this one's going to be a little bit easier. So we've got enough of that doorway out for now, so now myself and Ben are going to be here, up here, we're going to be doing some plasterboarding. But to be able to do the plasterboarding, of course, we need some plasterboard. There's a big stack of it here, so we've got to get that now round the back, up onto the scaffold, into the building before we can even put it on the roof and the wall. So, time to get the muscles going. Oi, oi! Once we had 10 boards up, it was time to put them up against the ceiling. I wedged them up with the board stands, and then Ben went around with a screwdriver and screwed them in position. So that's all the awful boards up now, the rest of the cut, so Ben can do that by himself. So I'm gonna be going downstairs and doing a bit more brickwork. The original door thresholds didn't line up with the building. As you can see, they're about 20 mil high. Not only on this door, but on the other door as well. So it meant cutting out all of the joints. So we wanted to keep the bricks, taking them off one by one, taking off the cement as well, which came off particularly easy for a change. Then a quick brush right the way along to make sure all the dust was gone so it would stick. I sharpened my pencil, measured the bricks out to 45 mil, Use my boat level to line them through, and then I was ready to do all the cuts. There was 35 of them to do in total, but it didn't take me too long at all. That was all the prep work done. Now for the cream. Finally getting a bit of trail time, although it was literally no more than about five minutes. <laughs> and just like that, it was all done. So now we're all done at the back there. Found a few more holes. Forever there's more holes. Five little holes here where the old joists used to get sit in. And they put in some new pipe work here. So we busted a hole through so they could get into there. So I better fill that bit up as well. So let's crack on with them. So there we go. There was another little bit completed. Happy days. Now I'm gonna lift a few of these up. We've already put a shitload up there, but I'm gonna get these ones up and all. And if you like any of the Tricky Bricky merch, hats and hoodies, they're available in the description. And the hats are limited edition, so you have to hit me up on a messenger if you want one of these. <laughs> 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 
then I found yet another hole that needed filling up. Now the next job I was supposed to be doing today is down here, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do it and I'm gonna show you why now. This area here needs to be re-block paved. Obviously, they had to get down here and connect the new water pipe up, but the copper connection where it joins into the plastic is leaking. We've got little drips coming out of it. We've had a plumber here now as well, having a look at it, and he said the ideal fit, it's not the ideal way to join a pipe. So it looks like we might have to be digging up the whole of this driveway and taking it to back to the water main and replacing it with PVC. And as you can see, it's quite a run. It's a, the main water point is over here, just behind my car. So I'm not going to be able to fill that up today and get that block paving done. But instead, I've got something else here to do. We've got a few tubes here that need to come out. This is where the original front of the garage was on here. So they've had to nibble this back so they can get the new timber frame building up. So we need to replace all of these half bats through here. So I'm going to get these all gunned out now and then refill them with bricks that match the house. So it's out with a trusty Titan. I've got my hop up set up. So let's get these done. Gunning out old brickwork. It's not my favorite job in the brickwork game, but hey, someone's got to do it. I also had to get rid of these glass bricks from the inside as well. These needed to be bricked up and made solid. I don't know about you guys, but I quite enjoy smashing glass. <laughs> Here's Tricky. It's really nice to see a few other channels now using the whisk. I've been using these for years on loads of jobs around London and all over the place. So if you just need a little mix like I have today, I've only got about 25, 30 bricks to lay. They really, really are handy. So into the tub, half a bag of sand, bit of water, quarter of a bag of dust, another bit of sand, a little bit of water, and it's time to whisk it up. And there we have it, mix done. And also, because they're so small and you haven't got a van like me at the moment, they fit in the back of your car really easy, so they're space saver as well. I'm going to be using this extra large gauging trowel for this. One, it's nice to get into a small hole, which is handy as hell when you're doing little fiddly jobs like this. And two, it gets right into the corner of the muck tub bucket. If you've got stuff in a tub like this, it really is a handy one because you can get right down into the corners and stuff. When you're using a normal trowel with a point on the end, you get the point in and you can't get the muck on it. So this one, you can really scrape up the last bit of the muck out of the tub. We managed to get an exact match for the bricks so it was really handy so i just cut my little pieces put them all in position then i went indoors and carried on filling up the holes where the glass was lovely old job yet another bit ticked off of the list happy days so now on here we're obviously going to have some lead come in here and fold down over this roof so we're going to need a groove cutting this third course up for the lead to go in so I'm just going to quickly run along here with my disc cutter or my, my angle grinder, little hand one, and bore out that. I'm going to get down about an inch and that'll be plenty for them to put their lid in with, lead in with their wedges and they'll be able to run their mastic seal or lead seal along the top of it. So I'm quickly going to cut this out and then we're going to be happy days. So I set myself up with my lead and my grinder and quickly ground this bit out. There we have it, all grooved out, ready for the lead. Nice. In my next video, I'm going to be working with my brand new sponsor. So if you want to find out who that is, make sure you hit the subscribe. But until then, peace out and pow. Look at the cheeky chops. <laughs>